Here's okay. David Mundy. So, watermelon, a chat with us, and then a rethink about what <laughs> is ahead. Well, what well, we thought was the end is not. Preparing for another game. Absolutely. This is all he knows at the moment. Yeah, that's all he's known for a long time. He's just taking his time. He wrote on the football three more wins. I was told a few weeks ago, he said six more wins. Matt is one of them. Congratulations. Thank you. Outstanding. Thank you. 375 games in the Fremantle jumper. Not many more remarkable than that. Yeah, pretty crazy. We um, would have liked to start the game a little bit better, but um, give him a 41-point head start and reel him in in the second half is um, testament, I guess, to the work we've done. So what were you doing at half-time when you'd come in? You, I think you took the momentum into half-time, but you obviously got off to a really slow start. What were you doing in the changes? Were you talking to the players or did you just let the coaches talk? Yeah, we, all, we typically come together and have about five minutes by ourselves to try and figure it out and, and talk amongst us, ourselves as players in our line groups. Um, so from a midfield point of view, we're being out-hunted around the football and the pressure coming forward was really disrupting the way we like to play. We're trying to, I guess, handball through the pressure a little bit. So uh, some of our real basic stuff we're able to turn around in the second half. Given, given that it is a younger group and we speak about all the, all the talent you've got coming through, not a lot of finals, so don't worry about half-time. I want to know what you're <laughs> thinking at quarter time. And are you saying to yourself, oh, I've, got, I've got to do a little bit more, I've got to set the example? What, what sort of things are going through your mind? Oh, I, I guess I take a little bit of ownership in terms of the leadership and talk that we're um, amongst the uh, midfield group and, and the um, team, I guess. But um, this year, we're, we've got to where we are by each player playing their role, no matter how the game's going. So we just drill back down into that, I guess, and that's our main focus. Just take us into the rooms. We understand there was a pretty special moment just a few minutes ago. <coughs> what was this with Justin? Oh, that's just a bit of our, um, bit of our trademark and a bit of our um, culture, I guess, and, and the, some of the symbols that we use to kind of bring ourselves together and, and some of the, I guess, more um, intrinsic things that we hang our game on. Was there a moment in that game where you thought, this is it for me? <laughs> yeah, when we were 41 points down, I started thinking about it. But... Um, I guess we've, Justin said in that meeting, we've been behind the second half seven times this year and come back and, and won at a GPS data. Not that that tells you anything about football too much, but it shows that we can go to the end and play how we want to play. So we have an, an immense amount of confidence in what we're able to do. Just talk us through your small forwards, um, their work rate, because when the ball is in your back line, it seems to me they, they get up, they spread the field, they break perimeter, you use them, and then, so they're in the back pocket, breaking perimeter, getting the exit kicks, and they're rushing all the way back to the goals. Do you guys critique that at, or talk about that at training and give the rewards for those type of efforts? Yeah, that kind of role play is, um, uh, some of that stuff is goes unrewarded, and, and sometimes they can find themselves in Death Valley a bit caught in between. Uh, we're not really getting the football, not getting much reward, but this kind of stuff from Michael Frederick, like he doesn't get a stat for that, but we absolutely value that high, more, high, more highly than almost anything. He chased 40 metres to lay that tackle. Yeah, he's, in, he's an insane boost. And the other end, Pierce did a great job on Norton. Yeah, he did, and he's been doing that all year, Alex. He's um, finally got a bit of continuity with his body and he's flourishing. Um, and he's our standing captain for most of the year without Nat. Um, and that leadership um, pressure, I guess, on him, he's just um, flourishing. That crowd there was the biggest crowd you've ever played in at a Fremantle home game. When you walked off tonight, knowing that you wouldn't play in front of them again, what sort of things were going through the mind? Yeah, it's been a weird one, to be honest, because there's no end date to yeah. this retirement. The, the show just keeps rolling on, so I'm just trying to enjoy every moment. Tonight was absolutely insane. Yeah. Um, you know, 58,000, and in a stadium like Optus Stadium, it really you know, bubbles in, and um, you know, we can feel that energy. Caleb, here come in comes. here and talk about your man. No, no, you stay put. You can do it. You can. I'll, I'll just, vanish. I just want to no, no, know. don't, don't go anywhere. <laughs> yeah. This is this is the present, and you've been so much part of the club. Just a thought on the superhero over here that doesn't often wear a cape. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Like everyone sees kind of what he does game day and how elite he is, especially kind of the last couple of years since I've been here, seeing it kind of game day. But what people don't see is kind of away from, I guess, the field and. Um, what he does at the club and what he gives to this football club is uh, is unmatched and we learn a lot from him every day still now. Um, he's still giving everything he's got right until the last day. Anything else you'd like to say? You want to go and hit the showers? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go try and find my family and enjoy the moment. But um, thank you, guys. It's been a pleasure. We'll see you Saturday night. Can't wait. Perfect. Collingwood at the MCG. Caleb, I've got good news for you. Have you got a Sonos system at your house at home? Come forward a little. I don't, know. <laughs> well, you now do. So Harvey Norman, all year, have been giving the best on ground, as judged by Wayne Carey, a Sonos system for the house. Basically, you put a speaker in every room, I think, as you know, yep. link it up with the Wi-Fi, listen to whatever you want around the world, 
That's yours because he oh, said you, you were the best up. Right? Yeah, well, you only have to have six, 16 contested possessions, 10 <laughs> clearances, five score involvement to the goal to get that. So, no. I can see a Sean Darcy I, hitting it down my throat. Yeah, yeah, I thought you were fantastic tonight from start to finish. We spoke about little things that you had to do and all of those things. So, the, the tackles, the clearances, all the hard stuff that you've got to do to get yourself back into the game. I thought you were right at the front, along with uh, your, your partner in crime in Brayshaw and a couple of others, and obviously Mundy. But uh, no, I thought you were terrific. Thanks, Doc. Thanks. And we spoke to Mundy about what he was thinking as an older player. Yourself, as a younger player, what are you thinking when you're five, six goals down? The crowd First final is a nightmare. First final is a nightmare. What are you thinking? Are you going internally into yourself thinking what you can do or how to help the team or the structure? What's going through your head? The first quarter was tough. Um, I felt like we were in some really good spots, but the f we were just a bit fumbly. Um, that was probably a big one. I feel like um, we just kind of let ourselves down with the basics. Um, so quarter time, my only message for anyone was communicate, get out of yourself, connect with your teammates. Um, and that was my kind of focus. And I felt like at quarter time we had some really, not heated, but kind of robust discussions about what was going on, especially in the midfield. And um, we felt like we were able to get back on top in the contest and it kind of started from there. What about Justin at quarter time? We spoke to him uh, start of the third quarter after you kicked the four goals and we asked him, what were you thinking when it was bad and what are you thinking now? And he was just so calm about it. He said, well, I thought we were in trouble. Now I think we're right in this. I think we can win it. Yeah, he's, uh, he's very calm always. He? Yeah, he's a level head. I guess at quarter time, his only message was at next moment. Um, that was the biggest one. And we're not going to um, chip it all kind of away in this quarter. Um, just chip it away bit by bit. And yeah, yeah. we're able to do that. I think we clawed back two or three goals in that second quarter and then a bit more in the third. And then we're able to take over in the last. So um, that, that message kind of st stayed true all the way through. Do you allow yourself to dream? Um, oh, you always kind of think about what, what could, but I guess JL's biggest message throughout the week, throughout the last two weeks especially, um, has been stick to the process, um, and that'll hold us in really good stead. So I feel like what we've been doing all year um, has allowed us to perform on the weekends, and that's not going to change. You've played seven games in Victoria, five wins, a draw against Richmond, one loss to the Blues. Collingwood next Saturday night. Before I let you go, what about Jai Famous? He suddenly sort of made a name for himself. It looked like it was going to be a bit of a disaster, but he suddenly wheeled himself into the game. Yeah, he's... Uh, Almost lost a kidney mid-year. Oh, he's an absolute class act. He's, um, he's quite unassuming through the week. You don't really hear from him. He just gets his work done. He's living with Fifey, so he's learning from one of the best. Wow. And, um, yeah, you didn't hear a boo from him all week. He was just going about his business. Um, kind of captain's run yesterday. You probably couldn't even tell he was out there. He was just going about his business. So to see him come out and stand up, um, it's no surprise to us internally, but it was really pleasing to see. Did you watch any of the cats in the pies today? I didn't. It was, a, it was kind of on a little bit in the, in the change rooms, but um, I was only kind of watching the score. But it looked like a good game.